Hey, welcome back. We're going to jump right into creating our very own sitemap. So I have a copied instance of that initial component that I was talking about earlier. So this is going to signify which page we're on and the different types of hierarchies and content within. And yeah, this is going to be great. I'm going to show you one quick thing. It's within a frame. If you notice, the frame has a thing called auto layout. And auto layout, essentially, it's really great for something like this. So I'll show you how that works. It's going to structure the content vertically and you can set the spacing between. So this is the container for the pieces within. So you can set the space on the top and bottom. You can set the space on the sides. You can also set the space between components. So that's really cool. And if I add a component or remove a component, this whole container will grow. So it's really great for something like this where we don't have to constantly resize something. So let's go ahead and just position this in the middle of our frame. Perfect. And what we're going to do is we're going to rename the title to home. And let's start thinking about the different types of content within. So we're definitely going to have a search that's going to be public. We're going to have something like a shopping interest thing. I'm not sure exactly what that's going to be. So I'm going to have to sketch that out later. So shopping interests and, and habits. So we'll have that. Um, we will probably have a login and a sign out on that page. So the reason why I'm even breaking this page down even more is so I can really understand what other pages I can get to or what other pieces of content I can get to from here. It also allows me to really understand maybe how I should structure that content when I'm thinking about how I place those items on a page, especially through wireframing. So what we'll do is we'll duplicate the search in here. I guess we're just gonna have to detach this whole instance and that's totally fine. Perfect, that will work. Okay, so we have search. Maybe I want shopping interests and habits to be right at the forefront and maybe I'm not sure what that looks like right now, but I know we're gonna probably have to have categories in this section because we don't really have it in the nav at the moment, but we're gonna reach out with categories, deals. We'll probably have a deal section. Let's just uh, copy this a couple of times. So this is all gonna be public. And we're gonna have a cart. Okay, what else? Let's think about the other things we're going to have that are related to members only. So we are definitely going to have a wish list, a way to get to the wish list. We are going to have orders. What else do we have? and a profile. So these are the different things that we will have. I've kind of listed the navigation in here that I've kind of proposed prior. It's up to you really. It's going to depend on whatever your preference is. It allows me to really think about the structure of the entire page as well as the navigation in one shot. So that's, like I said, that's just a little bit of preference. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna copy this all the way over here and let's start thinking about shopping interests and habits first so i'm not sure what that's going to look like but let's start thinking about that at least the structure of the page so we do know that this is definitely going to be a members only page and if you're not signed in then login or sign up's probably going to be at the forefront of that so we can go ahead and delete all these different public links. So probably there'll be a way to like discover new products, maybe like a my interest portion, like where you can edit them or see what you're currently interested in. There'll probably be some categories based off of those interests and there'll probably be maybe like some deals. I think that's pretty sufficient right now since we're just trying to get a sense of what the overview of our app looks like. And the second step is categories. Let's build that one out too. 
So categories, we won't necessarily need to have any more logins. We can go ahead and actually select all of these. Oops. We can delete these and a quick way to switch to the public instance is to just go into our instance panel over here and select public and automatically that changes to the color. So let's think about what could be on the category page um, and what links may link elsewhere. You know, we may link to certain pages that may seem redundant like trending items or whatever that means that may just link to like a page that is like a default list that we reuse over and over again, but we just name it differently, whether that's like deals, results. So just something to think about. Trending items maybe there. Oops, command C. What else may be on the categories page? Probably like this is gonna be a page where we can get to the different categories throughout the entire application. We do know like with larger Products like this, there'll probably be like categories around like gaming all the way to like fashion and maybe health. So it, it just is probably pretty vast. So we'll probably have to break this out just a little bit like and make it more interesting. So we'll probably have like a trending item section or something like that. Maybe some more like most popular categories. We'll definitely have like an all categories section. And we're going to probably have like a deal section again. So you'll start seeing like there's a deal section here and deal section here. And like we probably won't show all the deals, but we'll give them a sneak peek and they'll probably be redirected to some sort of redundant type of page that we kind of reuse over and over again. I shouldn't say redundant, more so that just a reusable kind of like page. So I think that's pretty sufficient for categories. What else do we have here? deals okay so we got deals and like i said this could be something easily accessible so you can get it primarily but you can access this from like the categories page and elsewhere so the deals page probably has like the trending deals probably has deals based off of categories So I'm not sure if these are the right choices right now. And that's a good thing to remember when you're designing, like everything that you're doing without user research is definitely an assumption and you should treat them as such. So just something to think about as you're building, don't just build the first thing that comes to mind, go out and test with users. I'll definitely cover that in another lesson. So we'll have here all categories. So I'm just gonna go member only. So there'll probably be like a member only section if you are signed in and if you will have enough content or data that our developers will be able to pull from and match you with certain deals, like deals just for you. There we go, deals just for you, I like that. I think that's pretty sufficient for now. See, now we're getting a sense of like what each page should probably have and where you can access it through the hierarchy wish list i'm going to call it wish list for now we've been calling it saved but i don't think that really does a good job of indicating what exactly it is i'm going to actually steal that button because this is going to be a members only section definitely a members only section so we have probably like your saved items Maybe there's multiple lists, but we can handle that once we start wireframing. Sharing, we'll be able to share, so we have to think about maybe where that leads. And similar items, so another way to get them into the funnel of buying other items that are probably relevant to their needs. So we have a wish list. what else is there? Let's copy this. And so we have orders over here. So that again is going to be a members only section. So let's do that. So well, if they do come into these pages, I'm thinking about having them be hit with like a registration block. So you can't necessarily create a wish list if you don't have an account with us or you can't really order if you don't have an account with us. So 
if somebody comes in and they don't necessarily sign up yet, then they'll be blocked to actually access these types of pages. So we're definitely gonna let them try out our app, but you know they're gonna be blocked uh, for the majority of it. Search and filter will probably be on the order screen. So they'll be able to search through past orders. What else do we have here? We have in progress orders and past orders. Maybe there is somewhere like a customer service based thing, like a help, maybe a help section. So that's, that's good to just think about what happens if an order is lost, what happens if an order is late. So customer satisfaction is very important. And we have, hmm, we have orders, profile and cart. Okay, let's think about cart first. This is not a members only page. You can view your cart. You just won't be able to check out. Let's just switch out with public. So we'll be able to see like items in cart. What else will we be able to see? Let's duplicate that a couple of times. We'll probably be able to see maybe similar items. I'm not sure if that's relevant right now, but I'm going to put it in there anyways. And I think that is fine. So items in the cart and the last one, oop, we're running out of space. So I'm just going to shift these all over a bit. Bum, bum, bum. And there we go. And profile. So this is definitely another members only section. So I'm just going to copy that and bring it in. Oops. You see how they just kind of like with auto layout, you can just kind of like place things so easily. It's really great if you're like designing for one use case. Um, Figma has yet to really implement something that makes it totally responsive. So I wouldn't necessarily use them like when creating containers for a responsive website. For mobile, if you're focused on just creating something that's maybe like rowing or shrinking, then I think it's really great. And we'll, we'll build that out as well eventually. So profile, what do we need to think about? Uh, if they are not signed in, they're definitely going to get hit by a wall here. So let's just do a members only section. And so the different types of things they can see here, they'll be able to see like my profile, I'm guessing like our account. Hmm. So account settings. Command C. So we're just going to copy these they'll probably be able to see like their interests maybe stuff like customer service will be it could be here tucked in somewhere what else could be here i think that's fine for now actually so their account settings that could be anything from like their profile image to payment methods to address settings interest is definitely just like categories that they fall into and we have customer service just in case we can link back to uh, if they need help with something and possibly orders. Maybe it's another way to get to the order screen. Okay. So that looks like the first kind of tier. We can easily lay this out nicely. What I want to do is just select all of them and go and click up here and distribute horizontal spacing. So now they're all evenly distributed and we'll just center that as well. What we can also do is there's a plugin called Autoflow. So we'll click that plugin and there it is. And this is really cool. I'll show you how it works. So if I select this container and then this container, it'll automatically create a line. And you can customize what that line will look like. Right now it has a 100 pixel radius. If I select zero, it'll just make a straight line. So we can use that. That looks great. So now we have our structure. I like this a lot. And we can remove that for now and we can just select all of these. And, you know, I'm not really worried about like the structure of what my current 
page structure looks like here on the side. I mean, these are meant to constantly be reworked, shared with others, and kind of like constantly recreated and refined. So don't spend too much time on making things perfect. So that's our first layer. Let's take another look at it. We have shopping interests, we have categories, deals, wish lists, orders, cart profile. That seems pretty sufficient. And let's stop here. In our next video, we'll get into building this out just a little bit more.